All right, everybody. Conscious Medium, Brendan Ross. And um, I'm coming to you with a little bit of heaviness here. This looks like this has really happened. And we're taking a look at the astrology of what's going on here in Russia. Uh, as many of you may or may not know, uh, your, your news feed might be flooded with this if you have it set to international news as I do. Uh, but you give me uh, Prozian. Prozorin, Prozorin, has been listed as someone that has died in a plane crash. Um, the plane crash had, um, it's, it's, it's interesting. It was from Moscow to St. Petersburg and was carrying seven passengers and three crew. And uh, coincidentally, they say that uh, eight bodies have been recovered. Now, I don't know what time this crash was, but I will tell you, by the time I saw it on the news, I, of course, went to you know, find out some of the statistical stuff. And Penny and I have done, uh, actually brought him up in a previous video. Maybe I should bring that up and do some comparison stuff here. But um, what I think was really interesting was that he, um, I mean, we kind of knew he signed his death warrant when he tried to march on Moscow and then tried to play games with him. Uh, the fact that this was kind of something very um quick, sudden, and when you take a look at the astrology, it's actually bone chilling that he would fly on a day like today. Um, but then again, he's probably up against it for a lot of reasons because he has a lot of old, a uh, lot, lot of lot of big planet issues. Let's put it that way. Forget about Mercury going retrograde. This guy had bigger issues going on here. Um, coincidentally, I think that the way that the news even hit was a really kind of um, really kind of a sudden thing, to be honest with you. Um, when I went to go check out his profiles and stuff and try and get a birth date and whatnot, he's already listed as dead on every major website. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with the idea that maybe this is a coordinated effort. I'm going to say that maybe these are just people really being on top of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is Putin, guys. It's just, it's Putin. Intuitively, I know it. Um, mechanically, it's something he would do. He's trying to send a message. Oh, don't travel. You know, we finally know where he is. And well, you know, the way that, at least in the U.S., whenever you fly locally or internationally, you have to, you know, put on the docket who's, who's in the manifest, right? Well, they would have known that he was going to be there. Um, and the person we're talking about here uh, is Freedom Fighter. He has over 25,000 troops underneath him. They have been threatening to really kind of faction off of Russia and be that um, be that part to be the antithesis of what's going on in Ukraine. They are not fighting for Russia. They are fighting Russia. They have joined Ukrainian troops, from my understanding. And then, of course, they, they know the lay of the land of St. Petersburg and Moscow very well. They were tied to different... Um, different drone attacks. They were they were attached to a few different um, pushes forward, but ultimately the news right now is that he's dead. Now I, that being said, he's a pretty cunning person, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's kind of doing the, you know, if they don't know I'm dead, then I'm more deadly. He could be doing that, but I've got to tell you, his chart is ugly for for this day to survive an uh, a, an assassination temp, attempt. And, um, yeah, it, it's, there, there's some, there's some cloak and dagger stuff here and I'll be interested. I don't think if he comes out within three days, I'm going to tell you why I'm going to show you in the chart, why he might've been able to be deceptive. And I'm also going to show you why it is that it was not a good time for him. You know, what does death look like in a chart? Well, here we go, everybody. Um, yeah. How to end the stupidity. We can't, we keep letting people be in charge. So, I just want to show that the reason why overall, and by the way, we don't have a birth time um, for Yevgeny, uh, but we do have kind of the angles of stuff. So take out the house stuff for a minute. Uh, it makes it a little less complicated in a way, but Uranus is square. And when you have Uranus square, it happens between 60 and 63, uh, give or take, um, you know, and he's like at that, at that point. He's at a 23 degree angle. He's at a 22 degree angle in his natal chart. So although it's moving past it, Uranus is also conjunct with Jupiter. And of course, with quick and sudden surprises, kind of a big deal, right? To see somebody have their plane taken down. 
it's it's interesting to me too. And by the way, I'm going to show a couple of different charts, and I hope you guys like that how I'm highlighting this. Uh, I'm still trying to figure this out to make it just bigger on the screen and all that other stuff. And yes, Penny and I are going to do another whiskey and bagels. Don't you worry. We, you're still going to get some Penny and Brandon. It's just Penny and Brandon are doing their own thing right now. Uh, those of you that don't know, um, Progezen. Thank you, Annunciations. Listen, I'm a I'm a I'm gonna sound like I'm drinking a beer on the back porch in the back forty whenever I say something Russian. You guys understand that, right? Thank you for the clarification, Z Zabs. Um, yeah, he was very popular, Earth Mama, and the Russian people may re rebel in this. And, and and this is where this is what I'm going to bring in too. That square to the Uranus is as much as it was a very tough time for him energetically, because you've got Uranus, you've got the rebellion, you've got the the spiritual unraveling, you've got the the truth seeker, so to speak, kind of coming out all together in this square. It could also backfire on somebody like Putin and be like, you really, you really assassinated the wrong guy. You really, really did. Because this will just empower the base. That 25,000 might be 50,000 tomorrow to be like, you know what? You can't stand rebellion. You can't stand. And oh, by the way, he's a rare, he's a rebel, everybody. It's kind of what he's doing, right? Hello, Uranus, my old friend. Now, let's take a look at why this is really tough energy. And I am going to bring in one more aspect. I'm actually going to come back to this. I want to point out what Neptune is doing here, right? Neptune is square to his Mercury and subsequently his moon, right? So that's the disillusion that's going on right now. So his friends may be enemies, his enemies may be friends, right? And again, you can't get into the house placement here. But just the fact that this has formed another T-square, I could have drawn this in. I probably should have. When you also take a look at where Neptune is in his chart, this is forming a near trine. So this activity right here, actually, this looks more like a sextile because we're going backwards here. But this is also in that position. It, it's not a true aspect, but where it is an aspect is also to Mercury here. So you've got opposition here of Neptune. Again, in the second house, but we're not counting houses. I'm just giving it to you for reference. Up to, in opposition to Mercury. And by the way, Mercury is, as we know, is currently conjunct to um, to Mars, right? And oh, by the way, Pallas, Pallas Athena is sitting right here. That's just, that's just warrior energy right here. So somebody at war right now is either going to become the martyr or they're going to advance. But with Neptune sitting out here on the other side of it, it's a little bit delusional. Not a little bit delusional. It is delusional. And I would even say, even though it doesn't really line up this way, Neptune is in almost true opposition to Mars right here. Mars being in Virgo. Uh, Neptune being in Pisces, 26 degrees, 27 degrees. You kind of see where I'm going with this. Wider opposition, but to me having Neptune be in, in a square to Mercury basically here. Um, I'm just going to tell you, this is like, he's delusional. There's something delusional about this, right? Um, yeah, Trish, I, I see that there on there that it's applying the sex style. I'm actually going to bring up the notes here in a second in the next slide. Um, you're always ahead of me. That's why you're a good student. Um, but one of, one of the dynamics of this with the Neptune is that also his natal Neptune, look at how empty he is on either side of this. This dude worked in reality. Yeah, it's a holy war. Exactly. Look at how empty he is here. And then the only thing in his natal chart that really kind of oppositions him um, is, is really what, Saris? You know, you've got you've got Vesta here that could be considered a wide conjunct, but it's, it's kind of beyond that. Um, but his Neptune... Natalie is, however, in opposition to Jupiter. And by the way, when those big boys start getting off in opposition, they create a lot of dynamic tension, right? And you got to take the good and you take the bad, right? And listen, all of this could backfire, 100%. Yeah, he probably should have gone all the way. I kind of felt that way as well. But I think he was, I think he was trying to be calculated, but he was a marked man from that day forward. So Neptune plays a role in this in terms of deceit and deception. 
So he may think he has a, a foundation, but wait until wait until I show you this next slide because when I get in here, by the way, my high school guidance counselor said I should not do presentations, nor did he think I would amount to much. Here we are. Here we are. Anyways, I have a funny story. In an upcoming book, by the way, I actually named my book vicariously about my high school guidance counselor. And I didn't quite realize that until I started writing about it. Anyways, so we've got a we've got a T-square here. So take a look at the nodes. You know, remember what we talked about with the nodes, how we have the Aries North node and then the Libra South node. The Aries North node is like, I got to get my stuff done, dog. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to go into it. My South node is like, hey, I don't want to upset the apple cart. I'm probably going to upset some people, but I got I to be me, right? So then you got this T coming in here pretty cleanly with Saturn in particular. Saturn's the great teacher. Saturn is the stability. Saturn represents the father, represents the authority figure. And guess what? He's at a 29 anorak of Capricorn. Guess what? That shit's going to go hard, guys. That is, this do, this this is why when the plane went down, I immediately went to the chart and I said, where is it? I didn't even have, I go, this is it. This is everything else is smoke and mirrors. It's deception. It's, it's all of the players that are in it. It's kind of like, I'm going to say it. Remember when JR got shot? You know, who shot JR? Hold on a second, right? Nothing else mattered. It ended up being a dream and Neptune and Pluto and, you know, Mars and blah, blah, blah. I should, I should do the astrology of who shot JR. But anyways, the conversation wasn't was no longer about, oh, a who done it or whatever. It became a dream. But the reality is, was he shot? Ooh, maybe he pulled something off here. I'm going to tell you why he could have and why he couldn't have. So in his natal chart, he has Saturn and Jupiter hanging out right on top of each other. They're eight degrees away, but still in conjunct, especially when those big boys get within 10 degrees. They can kind of feel each other. By the way, tons of gravitational pull. It's a good thing they are over 2,300,000 2, kilometers away from one another at any given time, even when they're hanging out in the same sign. If not, they come crashing down and they would probably get it to where he need, get, get it to where we need it to. Stay there, Pluto. Anyway, still a planet. Speaking of Pluto, it's transiting over the top of said Saturn. So when you have a power planet and a structure planet talking to each other, it's kind of like a power structure. But wait, there's more. There's more in this Ginsu knife advertisement. You've got Saturn and Jupiter talking to one another. Saturn is someone very structured. Jupiter is about the great expander, the teacher, the one that both are teachers, but one is about lessons and one is about curiosity. Guess what? When those two come together in a person's natal chart, that's leadership, everybody. And if he was a Capricorn rising, be very fitting of his first house. We're not going to make stuff up here, though. But regardless, he has a dynamic to be a leader. That is a leadership combo. Leadership combination, right? Now you have Pluto. Guess what? Pluto comes in the planet of death, the planet of the unbecoming. The planet of being able to come in and say, hey, either you're going to, it's going to incorporate all of the Scorpio energy. Either you're going to reclaim, rejuvenate, restructure, re, rebrand. And would you look at this? My guess, because of the transit of Pluto, this has been on the works for a little while. There might have been some other failed attempts because this, this right here that we're talking about with Pluto over Saturn, this has been going on for a little bit. They've been dancing. And by the way, it was over Jupiter for some of it too, right? Don't forget, Pluto's in this retrograde and it's just coming out of the retrograde. A couple of more weeks, everybody. Then it starts moving forward again, gets back into Aquarius for a good long time. Welcome to the age of Aquarius officially. But until then, it's sitting right over his Saturn and Jupiter. And, let's, and listen, Prozhizen has a had a problem from the get-go. He had chosen the stage to fight a war against a warmonger. You need a set of cojones to do that, guys. It's in his chart. He's got three things, and, and, and I'll go back and double-check my work, but that Saturn-Jupiter is like leadership central, right? 
the idea that he's he's got Uranus and and uh, and Mars in conjunct in his North Node, he is meant to get there. Everybody, he is meant to get there. And ironically, we've seen a lot of Gemini's Gemini suns here. We've seen a lot of world leaders. Why do you think that is? Why do you think? Yeah, exactly. I'm going to point that out here too. But why do you think that there are so many leaders with Gemini, right? You got Trump. I'm pretty sure Putin is, if I call correctly. I've been doing a lot of these charts lately, guys. And what, what's interesting is, is that you'd think Gemini kind of don't have it together. They're, they're the think tank, everybody. Geminis are a think tank when it comes to this stuff. They're trying to figure out who, what, where, when, how. Ooh, I just found a new button, everybody. How you like that? Yeah, I can't make myself bigger, though. That's not good for the ego. How's that? Ah, it's a little better. But when you see these types of T-squares, it's difficult energy. It's when, you know, when you hear somebody gets T-boned, that's real energy, right? That's difficult energy, right? It allows you to recognize that something's got to change, right? So this T-square right here in the South and North Node to what he's got going on in Saturn, Jupiter with the transit of Pluto, Guys, if you want to know what somebody looks like as a martyr, here it is. You know, Trish also chimes in on this. She's also talking about what's going on here. And, and again, it's the seventh house here. Don't get hung up on that. But you've got the sun at the 29th anoric over his north node, which is in uh, Virgo, everybody. By the way, this mutable energy, people with mutable energies want to change stuff, right? So you've got the three archetypes here, right? You've got the cardinal, which is the, the initiator, right? Let's get out there. Let's change that. Then you got the fixed energy, the tough kind of like, nah, I don't want to change. And then you have the mutable, which is, yeah, we're going to change whether we want to change or not. Woo. So you've got that at play here because his north node sitting in, in, uh, in Virgo, by the way, in conjunction with Pluto, so that also, there is a theory out there in astrology that when whatever is attached to your north or sometimes your south node, but a lot of times it's your north node, um, that planet transition or that aspect will end up being really important. Well, what did I start out by talking about? I talked about Uranus being squared to his Uranus. It's not going to, it doesn't look like he's getting to his Uranus return, Right. So Uranus is square here. His north node, the north nodes end up being in in uh, in serious influx here, and then it's conjunct to Pluto. Here's Pluto, everybody. So and uh, you know and listen, you can get into some of the angles of how you know Saturn's got a lot of play here into what's going on here in the sky. I could have talked about. You know, even even some of the trine energy into the sun. I could have talked about some of the aspects into, you know, into what's going on with Jupiter. Jupiter to Jupiter is even square. Not quite. Not quite. Not quite. Well, yeah, it's kind of square here. So you've got a lot of aspects here that are kind of working against it. And by the way, Jupiter squared to Jupiter in transit talks about like, hey, are you going to do this or aren't you? Like, you know, failure to launch. Like, this is my window. Got to get up and got to get going. Yeah, duality is a big thing here. Huge thing here. Absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead, type them in here. But I, I, I wanted to do a quick one here. Uh, and, and again, you know, this is something we probably would have jumped in. This totally would have been a conversation for, um, you know, for us on Whiskey and Bagels. Um, but we're taking a couple of weeks off here. I'm headed out of Dodge. I've got a bunch of videos to come out with. Uh, you guys are going to get flooded here. I got a full moon video coming out. I also have some Virgo season stuff uh, popping up. Hope you guys are following along. Like and share and subscribe and all that other good stuff. I appreciate you guys. The bottom of my heart, I've got some cool teaching tools coming out here shortly. Um, I've been busy as a one-hour paper hanger. Not not enough to get my hair cut, though. You see what I'm going on there? I uh, hope you like it. But I wanted to pop on and talk about this. 
So unless there's any other questions, I'm going to kind of get out of dodge here. It, it looks like, you know, I, I've got to say it this way. I think, I think this Russian thing, this is going to be a serious piece in the cog of what's going on over there. You know, we warned, Penny talked about it. I reaffirmed it. I talked about it in another video. Putin's got to watch his back. He's really got to watch his back. And maybe, you know, anybody that's worth their salt might look at this and be like, yeah, don't watch your back, buddy. But on the flip side of this, um, I've also been doing a lot of analysis. I just want to share this with you guys. Uh, I've been doing a lot of analysis on the Pluto returns in the U.S., in the United States of America. And everything that we seem to be going through as a social commentary, quite frankly, has been a brutal gut check for who we are as a country. I think we're going to see how what happened in Ukraine and Russia are going to be directly linked. And and it's not the simpleton point of view. And again, there's not, I'm not, I shouldn't say simpleton. It's not the simple answer that maybe it's, oh, gosh, we don't want to be in a civil war or we don't want to fight with our neighbors or anything else like that. I think what we're going to discover as we peel back the layers, like we did with the Kennedy assassination, like we did with, you know, the Bay of Pigs and, you know, a lot of these things that like we just we knew it wasn't copacetic, but we found out over time. I think we're going to find out that we really had some sincere links into Ukraine as well as Russia. And I don't think it was just one family that may or may not have been in the White House. I'm just letting you guys know that. I think we're going to see it from a couple of families, from a couple of corporations that had the vested interest to see uh, a, a punitive cooperation from Ukraine. And we're going to see how it was kind of tied to this. Do the good guys win? I hope so. I tend to think we're going that way. Um, I wasn't planning on it, but I, boy, I've had a lot of calls for people to that have asked me to do a chart on Trump's fourth indictment and now arraignment where he's going to be photographed and, you know, taken to the chamber, so to speak. Um, in the grand scheme of things, though, I think we are in the right direction, but boy, oh boy, is it a bumpy road. And this is one of those bumps in the road. When you see a T-square in somebody's chart, take a deep breath, especially with the nodes, especially with a heavy hitter like Pluto. Woo, right? That's We're all going through that right now. And the fact that it affects the exact reason why he was a leadership with Saturn and Jupiter, that's a thing, everybody. That's a thing. All right, guys. Well, listen, I want to give you guys a hard tap. I want to thank you guys for being part of things here. I think it was really cool that you guys were able to see this before I got it up as I was trying to do that. I don't know who it is that actually responded first. I think it was Claire. Claire, thanks for responding right away. I'm um, glad you guys thought of us on that one. Um, we're continuing to do this great work. Thanks, guys. Hard taps across the board. I hope that he is in someplace special because that Neptune could be him just saying, you know what? I see your skullduggery and I'm getting the heck out of here. He could have pulled the fast one. That Neptune is a escape hatch for him, right? So I want to thank you guys for being a part of things. Thanks, Trish, for your commentary. Uh, always helping. Judy, thanks so much. I appreciate you. Z Zabs, love that name. You got to hang out more, man. Uh, Arlene, great to see you. Janice. Wonderful to see you as well. Yeah, Penny blew up my phone. Uh, Earth Mama, thanks so much for being a part of things here. And uh, Claire and Lady Anne, thanks so much, guys. I'm going to see you guys soon and uh, look for some more videos later on this week. Got it? Take care, guys. Keep going.